It goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway, that lighting is one of the most important aspects of the craft of filmmaking. You need to know how to use light. Not just how to actually put up lights, but how to harness what's there. Right now, I'm doing a very bad job of that. And as you can see, it's very bright um, behind me. The autofocus is struggling because of the contrast. It's so dark and so bright behind. So I need some more light on me. The main light source is behind me, and that is outside and my face is, you know, not bright enough. Um, there is no additional light here. I have in this room, I have skylights up there and the other light is from the door and from the window. There's nothing over here at all. There is some bounce from the walls coming from the extra light, but I need more light on me. In this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about lighting, simple lighting setups, and it also gives me a nice natural way of talking about some lights that I've been using that I want to share with you, the Came TV Boltson series. You know, we, it's terrible right now. I actually have control of the Canon C200 right now via my phone. Look, I can um, decrease the ND. Here we go. Okay, um, my face may have enough light in it now, but we're losing the background crazily. I could increase the ND back to where it was and up a stop so that it exposes for the background, but now, I mean, the autofocus can't cope. So let's go back to where we started, which is here. So what I need to do is simply add some light onto my face. I need to somehow even out the background uh, with this, it's just awful. The autofocus, this is when the autofocus of the camera fails. Now as you can see, the light is changing. That's because we don't have a continuous light source outside. We have broken clouds, which is the worst. So one minute it can be really bright inside and then the next minute it's darker. So not only is the light intensity changing, but also the actual color temperature. So when the sun is out, the color temperature is lower. And when the sun is behind the clouds, the color temperature is higher, which means it is colder looking. So a very simple solution. I put one single light up to 55 watt Boltzmann Fresnel LED into a softbox. And as long as that light outside stays continuous, it should be okay. In my nine and a half hour cinematic masterclass series, I go into lighting throughout a number of the episodes for different sort of situations. And what's really important is understanding that continuous light and how it can affect you and seeing what you need to do to make it work. You also need to understand the concept of three point lighting. These are rules. So when you know them, you know how you can break them. And the easiest way for me to explain that is a nice darkened room. Not this one, this one. So here we go, two candles in the background. And now here's Sarah, lit by the key light, our main light. Quite side on as you can see, a lot of modeling on the side of her face, not very flattering for her. And that's why this fill light has come on. And that fill light is of a lower intensity than the key light. Otherwise, it will just be very, very flat. Now, the thing is, we do have a difference in color on the background, but we still need to bring up that edge of her side of her head there. And that's what the edge light or backlight is for. This is our traditional standard three point lighting. So let's take them away so you can see them separately. First off, let's remove our key light. So now we have just our fill and our backlight. Let's remove the fill and here we are, that's just our backlight. Now in an ideal world, we'd like that to be a little bit more over to the center, but if you don't have a boom arm light stand, you're gonna get that light stand in shot. So it is a little bit to the side. And now she's gone. One of the things you really wanna try and do is see those eyes come to life. And that's that catch light. You can see the reflection in Sarah's eyes. You can see the reflection of the two lights, the key light, and of course the fill light. It's something we talk about throughout the series. You need to know the rules so you know how you can break the rules. In the last episode it was the line. Here it's all about lighting. I very, very rarely will do three point lighting. Most times it's either one or two lights and often that additional light, the second one, is natural. It's about trying to set the right mood and it is really dependent on the location. I always do have enough lights to do three-point lighting and more, but of course the more lights you put up, 
the longer it's going to take. I like to uh, communicate. I like to this interview here for the man from Medina is quite flat. We do have light on the quayside coming in from camera right, a little bit brighter there. And the fill was actually from a window. We had nice continuous light outside. A lot of people are saying, oh my goodness, we're going to have Cuban cigars. But there'll be a lot of people that... that Here on Marvin, we have some light from indoors, practical light, but we do have a little LED panel over on the left hand side, camera left, and you can see it is bringing up a catch light in his eye. I like to see the scratch, you know, or the line. This interview with Ridwan, I didn't actually have any lights with me. This is a practical light, a side light, which is bounced off the wall. And the catch light is purely a piece of paper being held up by somebody for me to create a reflection. Not a true catch light, but it looks like it. <laughs> In my country, we didn't have like money to go boxing club, but we was to fight with kids, with each other, you know? And finally, in portrait of a boxer, my lighting on Festim is about as far away from conventional as you can get. He is lit. I have an 800 watt red head pointing down from quite high up. We've got no catch light in his eyes, we can't see his face. We're actually quite far away from him and there's a lot of empty space on the side of the frame. The whole frame and the lighting is to create a feeling of discomfort for the viewer. You don't want to feel warm and fuzzy, not with festive. It's better doing boxing than doing those things. The thing is you do need to practice and practice a lot to get your lighting good. If you are the model, you're sitting in and you're trying to light yourself, it is very difficult. You do need to have somebody to sit in because otherwise it's a pain. You have to keep getting up, changing settings of the camera, changing the light, having a look at it. And if you don't have a monitor, you have to record something, play it back, have a look at it, make more changes. Ideally, you've got somebody who can sit in for you. A friend, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a husband, a wife. But they need to be patient because it can be really fiddly, moving a chair here, moving a light there. So I'm going to suggest another solution you could use, which is a lot more patient than those people who you're asking to sit down for potentially hours at a time as you practice. It's a little bit weird though. This is a super simple setup, Boltson 55 watt, with a snoot on it, with the Bowens mount, and some atmosphere in a can. So this is Marjorie the mannequin's head I picked up from eBay. Pretty cheap, I think it was about 20 pounds, including the wig. Or you could just go to a clothes shop and maybe you can find one from there. It's a great way of practicing your lighting. I can put a soft box on her, move it around, find a nice flattering light. The softbox has the 30 watt bolts in it and the backlight is actually would have been better with a 30 but it's fine it's the 55 watt turned right down. It's a really great way of just finding a really nice way of lighting, practicing, try some hard lights, try the soft lights, move them around, try three point lighting, try two point lighting, try a single light without annoying your friends or your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband or your wife just a great way of practicing. Although they're probably gonna think you're quite strange. And if you are doing this, you probably are. I am.
This is the 30 watt bolts and this is the bi-color. We have the dial on here to change uh, color temperature as well as a dial on here for intensity. It is way more convenient than putting those gels in. You will pay more money, but for me, that convenience is definitely worth it. So you can change the temperature from 3200 degrees Kelvin through to 5600 degrees Kelvin. And this is kind of the light I recommend if you're gonna look for one that's gonna be a kicker, a backlight because the 55 is fantastic, but very bright. You're gonna to need to knock that down a lot, even at its minimum setting in really dark situations where you always get a nice, simple backlight. This one is a terrific light, and in darker situations, not this situation, it works really well. So this is the 55 watt. This is uh, not by color, this is a single color, this is daylight, and I have it on me right now through that soft box, and you can uh, spot it and flood it simply by moving it here and here. Uh, right now we are fully flooded to diffuse the light into a bigger area. But if you want to narrow down that beam, then you're going to spot it up. You also have the ability to change your brightness on here with the dimmer. Um, if you do want to change your color temperature, you need to put in some gels inside here. They do make the bi-color ones and they are way more convenient. They just are more expensive. You can also power this light using the Sony NPF batteries. Um, I don't tend to use them that much with the batteries just because these batteries take forever to charge up and they don't last that long with the lights. So do try and use the mains power if you can. But uh, on occasion I have used the batteries when I need to, but just be aware those batteries, the big 970s Sony ones, they take so, so long to charge. So let's look at a 60 watt by color, tungsten through daylight. Let me turn it right down so you can see that color temperature change better. Tungsten through to daylight. 3200 to 5600. It's a very flexible light. This is fanless, it's entirely silent. You can run this off of a battery, off of a V-mount, you can get adapter that comes with it. Um, it doesn't take the smaller Sony batteries, there's no way it would last long enough. But personally, it's gonna run off mains for me. That's its best use. I think this is one of my favorite lights. It's very bright and by color, so it's an incredibly flexible light. This 100 watt light does have a fan and it's very quiet. If you want the 100 watt brightness without a fan, then you need the bigger body. And this one is only daylight. They make it as tungsten and bicolor. And as expected, it's, it's pretty bright. This is after all a 100 watt LED. Very bright. This 150 watt is only available as daylight. It's a great big light. It's great for bouncing off of walls and for lighting up big areas. Uh, this only comes as the daylight. And in this case, which is, uh, does have the fan in it, although I can't hear it. It's incredibly bright, as you can see. Changing it from spot to flood, back to spot again. This is a beast of light. It's pretty heavy. Uh, you can run it off of V-mounts if you want to, v locks, but uh, AC for me. As with all the Boltons, you can put on soft boxes. So this is a very, very strong light and you can diffuse it with a nice big soft box. It's gonna make a fantastic large key. The Bolton line is huge. There's so many there. They're everything from that 30 watt all the way to the 150. If you are just starting out, you don't need the high ones. Start with a couple of the low wattage ones and maybe a high one. So maybe 230s and a 55 or 130 and 255s. Have a three point lighting kit. Not that you can always use that. Remember, know the rules so you know how to break the rules. But if you do need to, you do have them. You can, with the Bowens mount, put on soft boxes, you can put on snoots, and you can make these lights whatever you want them to be. A nice key light, a fill, a backlight, or just for picking up information. These are very, very flexible lights, and I love the quality of light that I'm getting out of them. Practice your lighting. Trust me on this, don't just focus on getting new cameras and new lenses. Get some good lights, lights which can really help bring your work to life. Hot summer night down by the lake I saw you sitting there make no mistake Girl, you took my breath away The firelight 